So Baldur's Gate 3 just came out with some absolute madness. It just released a tweet over on Twitter, obviously, or X. Something, something, something crossplay. Now we went into, I went in and I thought, you know what? They got crossplay photo mode, 12 new subclasses, continued bug fixing and a patch eight stress test. Now I went into the actual update itself just to have a quick look of it. And they were talking about all of the different things they've uploaded more than 3000 mods players have made over the past uh, three months. And they downloaded over 70 million. We've been playing mods, 70 million downloads across the board for all the mods in Baldur's Gate 3. I love the bloody modding community. They are the best thing since sliced bread and they do a lot for games. And just because like, I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 is an absolutely nuts game itself without the need for mods but with the mods it gives it just that little bit of extra kick for you to play the way you want to play so what they've added for these this new stuff is the cross play so whether you're joining on ps5 or on pc and jumping into the game with mac users from your xbox Baldur's gate free multiplayer will soon feature full cross platform progression including cross play just as the gaming gods intended once the update is live you'll be able to invite your friends to join your cross play lobby directly regardless of platform this is actually a massive massive thing because there are a lot of players still playing Baldur's Gate 3 if you look on Steam there's still a hell of a lot of players still playing it right now it's in like the 80,000 mark so with all of it across the different platforms we can now play with our friends who don't have PCs and we can play a PlayStation etc etc it's a really big thing for them to actually add now one of the biggest things we're going to talk about is the subclasses now patch 8 will introduce a new way to play your favorite class adding one new subclass for each of the existing bard barbarian cleric druid paladin fighter monk ranger rogue sorcerer warlock and wizard classes in the game there's new abilities animations visual effects summons and cantrips you can see some of it down here and they're going to be adding the college of glamour bard which means you'll find you'll be you'll have the power to heal your friends command enemies in equal measure mantle of inspiration to bestow your allies with five temporary hit points and should an enemy attack while it casts they'll find themselves charmed which means they'll be doing some of your bidding play your hand correctly and you'll be able to use this to your advantage with mantle of majesty target charmed enemies and you can command them to flee move closer free drop to the ground or drop their weapon like that that seems like it's going to be a pretty damn strong class but there's a lot of bard subclasses that are pretty damn strong at the moment so we have the barbarian path of giants opt for the path of giants your newfound giant strength will make it easier for you to yeet friend and foe alike forget chugging potions to pump those muscles these barbarians benefit from the giants rage passive that grants both strength and size allowing you to deal additional damage with throw attacks pockets weighing you down not for you and your increased carry capacity that's gonna be pretty nuts on that one that'll be that'll make some fun videos for a lot of the content creators out there that are like playing troll run through with it i saw a video once of gnomes like four gnomes just throwing each other around to kill stuff it was absolutely epic this is actually a really big one now I, when i saw the actual tweet itself like if we go over to the tweet one of the top comments on there was actually asking for the death domain or cleric or the twilight domain as a cleric of death you'll find a few dark new tricks up your sleeve from spells that specialize in necrotic damage to three new necromancy cantrips this includes toll the dead a cantrip that causes one to eight damage when your cleric rings the bell of impending doom a number that scales if your target has already been damaged we've also added the home brood ability to explode near by corpses damaging enemies that's actually like that that's going to be pretty damn nuts to be perfectly honest that, that's going to be absolutely nuts we have the druid circle of stars these druids look at the stars for answers access and powers beyond those offered through the classic wild shapes taking on one of three starry forms for their power and strategy archers dealing radiant damage with astral arrows the life-giving chalice restoring hit points to you and others nearby and the wise dragon allowing you to deal damage with an added bonus to constitution rolls the starry forms offer not just a celestial aesthetic but practical powerful options to enhance your roles as a healer fighter or strategist so now the druid can actually go in the three different specs so you can go in the physical you can go in a magical you can go in a healer type role and i think that's going to be something that's going to be some fun stuff we can do with that so we got the paladin oath of the crown you've been sworn to uphold the principles of law stay true to your oath and you'll be rewarded with the power to aid your allies and disrupt your foes guide your companions in battle with righteous clarity torn enemies with strategic interrupts and keep your party standing across a def with defined allegiance absorbing their damage while restoring their health this is going to be a more tanky approach to the paladin i think that's going to be a little bit fun not my cup of tea i'm not the biggest tanky fan but i'm sure there's people out there going to enjoy that we've got the arcane archer for the fighter mastering the dual arts of magic and marksmanship the arcane archer subclass offers unique skills on top of new shooting animations banish foes to the fey wild removing them from the battlefield for a turn or unleash psychic damage that forces enemies to make wisdom saving throw will be blinded until the start of the next turn it's actually going to be quite a good one for if you're going to be running your illithid run i think that's going to be quite a decent one to run through with the psychic damage etc especially 
Ninja's psychic damage being part of the class itself. I think that's going to be quite an interesting one for people to run around and throw. We've got the Monk Drunken Master. Putting the Bruin Homebrew as the Drunken Master, you have the ability to consume alcohol straight from your inventory as well as drink from bottles you see around the Sword Coast in order to recover key. By sharing the bottle with your enemies using Intoxicating Strike, you'll generate a buff towards your armor class and your chance to hit drunk targets. Drunk enemies are also susceptible to the Drunken Master's other abilities like Sobering Realization, which sobers up drunk targets, dealing physical damage and psychic damage i think that's going to be this is going to be another one of those ones that are going to be like a meme run i think it's still going to be quite strong but i think that there's some content creators going to make some really good content out of the drunken master monk i think that's going to be really fun to see we have the swarm keeper for the ranger the swarm keeper subclass provides rangers with three kinds of deadly swarms to assist them in combat the cloud of jellyfish deals extra lightning damage potentially shocking your enemy the flurry of moths deals psychic damage giving you the potential to blind your enemy the legion of bees deals piercing damage and forces the enemy to make strength saving throw will be knocked back 15 feet each swarm also has the ability to provide you with teleportation capabilities that actually sounds pretty damn overpowered like i wonder how that's actually going to turn out next up we have the rogue swashbuck club this rogue subclass introduces a range of new actions fit for the piratical life play dirty by tossing sand at enemies to blind them flick your weapon at a target to disarm them or use your fancy footwork passive while meleeing your emulate enemy to ensure they can't opportunity attacks against you for the rest of your turn that's going to be i, I don't I, that, that doesn't for some reason the rogue stuff i love playing rogue but for some reason in Baldur's gate 3 i find the rogue is just completely subpar on most levels like it's good to have as a one level i mean there are classes that there are like builds out there that are actually pretty good but just using it as a starting first level to get all of the proficiencies that you need is kind of all it's ever really been used for. This is the one that is This one seems to be the most interesting to me. We've got the Shadow Magic Sorcerer. As a Shadow Mage Sorcerer, you deal in a form of magic that makes you the deadliest in darkness. This subclass will give you its Sorcerer superior dark vision, as well as the ability to shadow walk between places of dim light or darkness. It also lets you call forth the perfectly homebrewed Hound of Ill Omen to harass your foes and use Strength of the Grave to prevent you from being downed ideal for those attempting honor runs i love the idea of this i love the idea that you can have like a one down for your honor mode runs the superior dark vision is going to go that's going to go really well with some of the other abilities that sorcerer has where you would normally have to dip into a let's say a warlock or to dip into some other one of the classes you may not have to do it anymore if you're going to be running a shadow uh, sh like this shadow spec is i think it's going to be quite interesting next up we have the warlock hexblade hexblade warlocks make a pact with an entity from the shadow fell that manifests in the form of magical weapons curse your enemies and force their souls to do their bidding slay any enemy that isn't generally an enemy of nature construct giant blob or already dead you'll be able to raise their spirit from their corpse for 10 turns this summon can deal necrotic damage and will rip away a chunk of your enemy's soul to provide your hexblade warlock with healing this one sounds actually pretty damn strong but the problem the, the thing that i would have wanted was the new summon uh basically when this uh raises it not just for 10 turns i i would have hoped that we could have used it throughout the game and have it as, as this kind of companion side pet type thing that would have been really interesting and really cool there'll probably be a mod out there to actually do that but i am interested in probably playing a hex blade as well and last up we have the wizard the blade singing the blade singing some class merges sword play with wizardry expect new spell casting animations when casting spells with your weapon a new blade song ability to grant you supernatural speed agility and focus plus gives you the bonus to any constitution saving throw you make this one seems like it's going to be kind of interesting uh it's, it kind of feels like a little bit of a warlock but a mage kind of like new spell casting animations where they're going to be using their sword to actually cast a spell I, I, it kind of feels like it's going to be a little bit of a warlock thing there and that's all of the subclasses out of the way what one most interests you what one are you going to be running out when this actually does release i think it's going to be releasing next year but i think it's absolutely insane that they dropped 12 subclasses randomly out of nowhere i think that's actually a really really like that that's actually amazing to me next up we have the photo mode there's camera settings for this where you can move stuff around you can make them do different positions we've got a hotkey binding you can see here how you can like it's actually nuts lens setting so you can zoom in zoom out field of view and you can get them to do different poses to make some really funny photos on there i think that's going to be really nice for those making thumbnails and for those who just want to make a really cool background out of the Baldur's Gate 3 in-game stuff. So we've got scene settings where you can actually like if you want a shot and you've got people in the way you can actually just get rid of your party members now that's nuts or npcs or enemies like there's three different things here where you can actually click them off so like when that guy just comes into the shot walks in and it's just standing there in the middle of the screen that's actually 
that's actually a cool thing to think about. They always think about the little things, Larry and Studios. They always think about the little things. So the internal playtesting for Patch 8 was well underway, and we wanted to highlight just a couple of the great shots our playtesters have been grabbing in the photo mode, and they've chosen to edit them. They've done some stuff with the post-processing effects. While you won't be able to adjust your party or play around with lens and camera settings during cinematic scenes and dialogue, you'll be able to color grade your shot and experiment with contrast, saturation, highlights, brightness, and vignette. They'll be adding some flair to the scene, so you have different flames that come from inside frames flames frames but i'm sure there's going to be mods out they're going to add different frames to this as well to make it cleaner I, I'm, this is kind of really old school boulders gate one two kind of thing i really like the look of that they can add things like stickers like a crown on that to make a selfie photo in the background and put some hats on them and stuff it's kind of funny a little bit of weird stuff going on there and then they talked about the patch eight stress chest with your feedback and support our last patch brought some big changes to the game with just two buck fixing hot fixes post-release this that's a win in our books and we're looking to do the same again for patch 8 so let's talk about stress testing this time you're invited to join us for a period of stress testing where you can jump in and try out the new subclasses explore tabs best angles in photo mode and play with friends together on other platforms yep this stress test will be available on those on xbox and playstation as well as pc the goal is to go beyond our internal testing and help us catch things before they can become an issue once a patch has been released along with all the newness coming to patch 8 we'll also be integrating a large selection of bug fixes polishing up mechanics including ensuring shadow heart's hair dye no longer washes away when she takes a dip in her romantic partner we'll be sharing more on what spin fixed in a future update so the stress test begins we're looking to begin in early january you will have the opportunity to register your interest before then things will be done a little differently this time around so we'll be back with the community update 31 to take you through what's being tested and how you can take part so we're looking to get the stress test uh, for us to be testing out all the bugs and stuff around january and then it's probably a month or two after that we'll be looking probably march will be the, the release i would say personally and that's what we have for this amazing new update that comes out There's still smashing this game out even though they know, like they know they're going on to their own ip again we don't know what that's going to be just yet but they're still working really hard to get everything and put more into Baldur's gate 3 now there won't be dlcs and stuff like that which is a shame for some but i think they're leaving on a high note which is a really good thing for them and they can go on to move on to their their kind of thing and have more freedom and creativity to create what they want and i think that's going to be a really good thing and it's really smart decision for larian to do so it doesn't much happen when it comes to game developers they kind of tend to just go where the money is and these guys are not going where the money is they got their fame they got their critical acclaim for making Baldur's gate 3 and they're going to move on with their own stuff i think that's absolutely amazing so what do you think of the crossplay, the subclasses? What's your favorite subclass? Are you looking forward to this? Are you kind of upset they're not going to be doing any DLC for Baldur's Gate 3? Let me know down below. I want to thank you all for watching. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams.